Welcome back to Archer's World of Literature, guys. Today, I'm so, so excited. We are jumping back into Berserk, and we are going with the second major arc, which is the Golden Age. So the Golden Age sort of went through Guts's sort of traumatic childhood and sort of explains how he sort of came to be this great warrior and this um, his prowess in warfare um, and some of the really, yeah, like I said, traumatic things that happens to him um, and sort of him learning that there are good people in the world, there are people that are willing to be his friends, um, but still being very wary of trusting people because of what happened in his past. So we're going to sit down, we're going to chat about the golden age today. Um, this was brilliant, like this was definitely, I mean, so far this is my favourite arc, and I've only read two, but uh, yeah, compared to the first one, I just think that this went into his childhood really, really well, um, and there were some super cool scenes in here, so looking forward to chatting about it. Um, strap yourselves in, let's do it. So after the conclusion of the Guardians of Desire, uh, we, Berserk sort of jumps straight into the past, that jumps into the Golden Age, um, and it starts off with not like how Guts was born, but how Guts was found. So basically Guts was found by um, a group of mercenaries, and Guts was a baby on the ground in the mud, sort of screaming and crying, and he was actually sitting underneath his mother, who was hanging by a tree. So she was on this huge tree, um, and off every single limb there were people hanging from this tree, like it was this death tree, right? Um, we don't really get told why that was the case, you know, at least yet, um, but Guts was found underneath one of the bodies that was hanging. Um, so this group of mercenaries comes along uh, and they find the baby and they're about to leave, but then one of the wives of one of the mercenaries, one of the women in the troop, runs over and picks up the baby and she wants to look after it because she's had some miscarriages and this might be her chance to raise a child. Um, so she picks it up, her name is Sis, and so she becomes Guts's like adoptive mother. Um, now her husband is Gambino, who is the leader of the troop, um, and so essentially Gambino kind of becomes also like an adopted father for Guts. Um, Sis eventually unfortunately dies of the plague, um, her face is all distorted, um, Gambino's out fighting, he's not even there for her, um, but Guts is right with her when she dies. Um, so after the sis dies, Guts ends up sort of becoming trained um, as like a young soldier in this in this mercenary group. Um, he's being trained by Gambino and doing sword fights in the in the courtyard and things like that. Um, and he's already training with an adult sword, which sort of explains why he's using this huge you know lump of metal or whatever later on when he's an adult in the series. Um, so, because they didn't have any children's weapons around, so he's forced to train with uh, an adult-sized sword, and he's sort of about, I want to say, like five, six years old or whatever when they're training. Um, essentially, eventually, sorry, um, Guts is training with Gambino. Um, the whole mercenary crew is watching him, um, and sort of Guts ends up showing a little bit of aggression during this fight and, you know, strikes, you know, makes a few cuts on, on Gambino, and Gambino sort of loses his temper and strikes Guts across the face with his sword and draws to the bone... Um, this huge scar, and so that's how Guts ends up getting the scar that he's, you know, known for in his face. Um, he continues to fight with the mercenaries as he gets older, so sort of like years keep going past, um, he's participating in these raids and these sieges, and he's sort of there as Gambino's left-hand man. Um, we end up seeing, uh, during one of these nights, um, after the battle, unfortunately, uh, Guts is trying to sleep, and so yeah, he's a child here. Um, and one of the members of the mercenary crew, Donovan, uh, ends up entering his tent and sort of um, raping him throughout the night. <clears throat> and so Guts is trying to refuse, but then Donovan tells him that he actually bought Guts. He tells, he tells Guts, he says, um, Gambino sold me. He sold you to me. Um, Don Donovan tells Guts that he, he, paid, uh, he paid Gambino three silver coins, I believe, um, to have Guts for the night, so awful, absolutely disgusting, um, but Guts sort of is too small to, you know, resist, um, so Donovan has his way with Guts throughout the night, um, and the next day, during a battle, because sort of Guts doesn't, he's been told that it was Gambino that allowed this to happen, but Guts doesn't really believe it, um, or, you know, he's sort of trying to convince himself that it's not the case, because Gambino, while he's been a bit rough and dismissive of Guts, he's sort of a bit felt like this, he's felt like a father to Guts, right? 
So during uh, the next day, they go on a on a raid, on a battle down near this river. They encounter this this enemy group, um, and so they're in this battle with this enemy group. And um, when no one's looking, uh, Guts actually shoots Donovan through the chest with a crossbow. Donovan turns around and he's like, "Guts, what are you doing? Like, you know, you bastard!" Um, and then Guts shoots him through. The, uh, I think it shoots him through like the cheek or something as well. Um, so he shoots him twice, and then Donovan falls to the ground. Guts goes over to him, and you got to keep in mind, Guts is like a seven-year-old here or whatever, so he's like already getting his first taste for blood and like trauma and pain and all these things. Um, and so Guts goes over to him, and he he says, "Tell me, like, who sold you me? Like, tell tell me the name again." And he's got this sword over his mouth, and he's like, "Tell me, tell me." And so Donovan is like struggling; he's coughing up blood, and he's like, he's like, "Gambi." Gambi, and like he's trying to say Gambino, and before he can finish, Guts pushes his sword down through his mouth and kills Donovan. So hooray, he got he killed Donovan, um, and then sort of the the battle finishes and life goes on as normal for a few more days. Um, so a few more years later, uh, Guts, you know, has grown a little bit older, continuing with the same the same group, um, and they're continuing to just to raid castles and lay sieges to battlements and things like this. Um, and one day during a battle, uh, Gambino is actually thrown from like a battlement. Um, there's like an explosion or something. Um, and he falls like right next to Guts and Guts is like looking over and Gambino has lost a leg. He's got an entire leg missing. Um, and so basically because of that, Gambino is forced to retire his position as leader of the troop. Um, and so because of that, he falls easier into drinking and he's more grouchy um, and he just becomes a more irritable person because, you know, he's well, he's lost his leg, right? Um, during one day in between one of these battles, um, you know, Gambino's is calling over Guts and he starts sort of hitting Guts when he's not doing what he wants and sort of being like really rude to all of and grouchy to all of the other, um, all the other mercenary mates. Um, and then anyway, so Guts later on that night, he's in his tent and then Gambino comes in like drunk um, and he's just like, he's trying to fight him. He's got a sword and, and stuff like that. And, uh, Guts is like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And Gambino just all of a sudden, he just lays all this stuff on him. He says, cause I think he's drunk, but he's like, you're the reason sis died. You're the reason my wife got the plague somehow. I don't really know how, you know, Guts could have made that happen, but you know, he's, he's drunk. So he's just rambling. Um, and he actually says to Guts, he says, you should have died. We, you should have died under that tree. You were always a bad omen. Um, you were found under this death tree. You were always a bad omen to us. We should never have let you in. You should have died. Um, and so Guts is heartbroken. Is this person he relatively looked up to is just saying that he thought these things all along. Whether or not he actually did or this is just him being drunk and grouchy because he lost his position as leader, we don't know. Uh, but either way, he's saying these really hurtful things. And then he tells he tells Guts some awful news and Guts' worst fears come true. He says to Guts, he says... He says, you know that one night when Donovan came in and had you, he paid me. I sold you to Donovan. I, you're, you were worth three silver shillings and I let him do what he want with you. Um, for whatever reason, he felt like telling Guts that, just to be a prick, you know, whatever. Um, and so Guts is heartbroken. He's, uh, he's, he's truly lost. And so, yeah, so um, Gambino and Guts end up having this, this quarrel, um, this argument, and Guts is crying like he's he's crying like why would you say these things did you really always think these things and this is just another trauma that guts has to live with like he's just sort of being gaslit into believing that you know his whole life was a lie and all the people he thought cared about him actually didn't um so this just adds to his his emotional trauma um and his physical trauma he's got this person he thought it was his adopted father um coming in and trying to attack him um and so this all turns into a bit of a sword fight um because he's sort of drunkenly trying to you know, attack Guts, and Guts defending himself with tears in his eyes, and the the wonderful fighter that he is, um, plunges his sword through Gambino's throat um, as as he's attacking him. Uh, so Guts is crying, he's got blood of his, you know, this adopted father, his fatherly figure, and, and the body of, of Gambino in front of him, and he's crying. And he's just sitting there, he doesn't know what to do, um, and then all of a sudden, during this, 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 uh, this quarrel, one of the candles has fallen over and it's burnt down. It's starting to burn his tent. Um, and so seeing the flames, the rest of the crew come in to see what's going on. Um, and they see Guts in there holding their ex-leader, a man they looked up to. Um, they see him holding his body in front of him. They they immediately, they go, Guts, you've, you've killed him. What have you done? 
um, and they go to try and kill Guts because they say that a traitor needs to be hung. Um, and even though he's like this kid, they're, you know, they're going, you know, ballistic, trying to get him. Um, Guts ends up sneaking past them because he's a lot smaller. He can like run through their legs. Um, he kills a couple of them uh, and then he, he runs because, you know, there's too many of them. Uh, Guts jumps on a horse. He takes his sword with him. That's all he's got, his horse and his sword. Um, and he flees the camp. He flees and he's like, you know, what am I going to do now? Um, no one's going to believe me, you know, that all this stuff happened and that Gambino started it and Donovan did this to me, etc. So Guts is fleeing the camp and he's being pursued by the rest of the mercs um, on horseback and Guts ends up arriving to the edge of a cliff face and there's nowhere for him to run to anymore. It's sort of Guts is here, the cliff, you know, if he keeps going forward, he's going to fall off. Um, and behind, A very narrow cliff, mind you, um, and behind him is, you know, all the mercs that were chasing him. And they they end up shooting him in the back with a crossbow. They're shooting him. Um, and so he gets shot and he's losing blood. Um, and they're all like, oh, you know, where are you going to go now? We've got you. Um, and Guts ends up sort of like fainting or like collapsing off his horse. And he ends up tumbling down the cliff down to the bottom with a sort of like a lake. And then all the mercs, they go, oh, you know, he couldn't have survived, you know, a fall like that. We got him. So they turn away. Um, you know, little do they know Guts survives. He stumbles up. He's losing blood. He's got cuts and scratches all over him. And he starts stumbling across this sort of like river, this lake, um, and he's looking up at the stars and he's sort of going, you know, what am I doing? Like, you know, where am I going? Um, you know, what's my point in life? You know, I'm just sort of, what's, what's the point of all this? Um, all this running away and all this violence and all this trauma. And then to add on top of all of this death and destruction, um, he finds these wolves, there's a pack of wolves come up to him um, and they surround him. And he's he's just defeated. He stands there and he's like, this is it. I'm, I'm gone. And the wolves surround him. And then sort of this like survivor's in, uh, like, like a sort of survivor's instincts kicks into Guts. Um, and he ends up slaying like four or five, six of these wolves. Um, and then the rest of the wolves get scared and they run off and Guts faints again. He collapses on this ground looking up at the stars with all these dead wolves around him. Eventually, another group of mercenaries, and a second band of mercenaries... Um, end up going past on their caravan to, you know, wherever they're going and they find Guts. And it, what's interesting is they actually go, oh, he must be a, a really good omen. This young kid who survived all of this, they don't know what's happened to him, but they see he's got all these, these wounds on him and he's bleeding out and he's got these dead wolves around him. And they go, he must be a really good omen for being able to slay all these wolves and survive all these cuts and bruises. Um, we're going to take him on because he's a good omen. And so what's ironic about that is because he was actually you know, considered a bad omen because of where he was found under the, the, the corpse of his mother by the other group. And so the second group thinks he's a, you know, um, they think he's a good omen. So they actually take him in and he becomes part of the second troop. Um, he continues to prove his strength and his prowess in battle. Um, and he continues to make good money during these sieges. So because, you know, Guts is just super strong and because he trained with this large sword as a kid, he's super nifty, he's super nimble. Um, and he's able to sort of sneak under these huge, the big guys in battle and sort of take them down. Um, and so because of that, he's sort of respected within this second troop as, you know, one of the greats in, in the troop, um, even though he's really young. Uh, and so eventually he ends up, you know, he continues to make good money in this, in one of these sieges. And then the, the troop leader comes up to him and says, um, you know, would you like me, would you, would you like to become my, my left-hand man? Like, you know, and sort of, um, like a squire, right? Like a knight's assistant. Um, cause the leader is actually a knight and he's sort of running around with these mercenaries and these other knights and they don't really explain how his troop works, but he's sort of offering Guts to become, to, you know, an official title for a bit more money. And Guts actually refuses. He walks off cause he's like, I think he, you know, he prefers the lifestyle of, of just being a mercenary. He doesn't really want to be tied down to anyone um, have any official titles he sort of likes being this rogue um, so he actually walks away um, and you know the, the knight's like you'll regret this one day you know whatever um, Guts ends up wandering through this uh, this sort of plane um, and this there's sort of these other guys who are just sitting around having some drinks by a campfire on the top of this hill um, and they were actually at the previous siege um, you know, for whatever reason, it's not really explained. They were just there. They saw what Guts did. So they actually saw Guts, um, but they, they approach, they approach Guts. One of the guys goes over and goes, I'm going to kill this guy. You know, he, he was there, you know, we saw what he did. Um, and so he goes over and starts challenging Guts. Um, and Guts ends up just like severing the arm of one of them and then killing another two. Um, like I said, you know, just 
super amazing in battle. One of the people that comes up to him after, to battle him after he's just severed the arm off of one of them, he's killed one of them, um, is Casca. And so Casca is this, like, a little girl um, soldier, right? So she's sort of like the equivalent of Guts, like, in female form, right? Um, and she's trying to battle him. Um, and it's a pretty even battle. They're both really quick because they're sort of relatively this sort of similar age. You know, they're both, you know, minors. Um, and so, you know, eventually, because Guts is a little bit older, he ends up sort of about to be, you know, slaying her down. Um, and then this huge spear uh, comes through in between Guts' sword and Casca on the ground. Um, and then a man in shining armor who is Griffith appears and he was the one that threw the spear to interrupt this fight um guts charges griffith um and basically you know gets pretty beat up um and he ends up fainting after receiving like a really severe wound under his arm um the next sort of chapter or you know the next few pages we see guts having these nightmares these night terrors these dramatic flashbacks about donovan about gambino um about the raping when he was a kid um, about being betrayed about his mom dying all these things and he ends up waking up in a sweat, um, and he walks out of his tent, he finds himself in this new campsite, um, and he, he finds out that by Griffith's orders, um, Casca, the, the little girl, actually had to sleep next to him, um, to keep him warm, to bring him, try and bring him back to life, because apparently Griffith said that it's a woman's duty to warm a man in bed, um, and so he actually made her sleep with him, um, not do anything, but just be by his side to try and, you know, warm up his body. Um, we end up finding out that Guts has found himself amongst the Band of the Hawk, which is like a really renowned, um, powerful mercenary group across the land. Um, and so basically Griffith's later on in the day, Griffith's like up, up top on this mountain on this, this hill near the camp and Guts goes over and he just wants to like find out what's going on. Um, and they end up having this battle because, uh, Griffith, Griffith tells Guts, he says, um, I want you. He's just like, I want you. Griffith's like, Griffith actually says to him, he's like, oh, are you like gay? Like, is it in, in, a, in a gay way? And then he's like, no, like, I just, I just want you for my, my crew or whatever. Um, and, you know, I think Guts is quick to assume that about people who say those thing, kind of things because of what happened to him um, with Donovan and sort of the trauma from that. So he sort of, anytime anyone sort of says anything that's relatively nice to him or just like a compliment or whatever, he instantly jumps to... Um, you know, something negative and to be fearful because he's sort of got PTSD from that event. Um, and then they end up having a battle where if Guts wins, he gets to give Griffith um, a wound under his arm like he received from Griffith. And if Griffith wins, he will, um, he will, claim, Griffith, uh, he will claim Guts um, as his. Uh, so it sort of goes back and forth between the powers of the two of who's winning and who's losing at each time. Um, it looks like Griffith's winning at the start. Um, and then Guts ends up gaining the upper hand um, by, like, lifting up his sword and, you know, he's about to flick it up, this huge sword, to hit Griffith. And then Griffith actually jumps and sort of balances on top of it because it's huge. So Griffith's balancing on top of it and he has a much smaller sword. So he puts the sword towards Guts' teeth and everyone, people have gathered to sort of watch. Um, and Guts sort of goes, no, I'm not, I'm not letting this be my defeat. And he's like, I'll show you what a mouth should do in battle. Like, it shouldn't be, you know, yammering insults and talking all this smack. It should be doing this. And he bites. Um, he bites the sword that's in front of his face and his teeth and his mouth's all bleeding and stuff. Um, and he ends up throwing Griffith off from the balancing of his sword um, and ends up beating Griffith up and like punching him a bunch of times. And then Griffith sort of ends up really quickly snapping around because everyone's like, oh, my God, we've never seen Griffith, you know, be in trouble like this before. So Griffith ends up sort of getting back and then getting, he flips Guts over and sort of like this arm lock. Um, and he says to him, he says, you know, tell me that like, you know, you'll be mine or whatever. I'm going to dislocate your arm. And so Guts just calls him an asshole. And so Griffith just dislocates his arm. He just pops his arm out. Um, and so he says, after this, he says, now you are mine. Now you belong to me. Uh, so after this, Guts is taken on his first assault of an enemy camp with this new group. Um, he has to prove his strength, um, you know, as protecting the rare, like the rare side, the behind of the raid. Um, after Guts is, you know, Guts is doing an amazing job. He's proving his strength. He's defeating a bunch of people. Um, but after he's nearly defeated, Griffith actually comes back to the rare behind where Griffith is, uh, where Guts is, um, and picks him up on his, on his horse and then leads the people who are about to defeat Guts um, back to the castle where they were raiding from. Um, and back to a wall of cannons that Griffith set up and they shoot away all the enemies. So he sort of rescues Guts. Um, later on that night, they're celebrating this, this win 
um, and Guts being the sort of isolated, you know, traumatic affected person that he is, he's sitting up on the castle wall by himself and everyone's celebrating on the ground. Um, and eventually he's approached by, um, sorry, I'm just looking at the names that are written down because I haven't memorized them. Um, he's approached by Rickett, who's one of the boys, um, and then he's approached by one of the other girls named Judow, um, and they're offering Guts to come down and celebrate uh, with him. And sort of Guts is like, no, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't feel the need to. Um, and then sort of the group's giant, like the big soldier comes up and his name's Pippin, and he's like this sort of friendly looking guy, whatever, but he's, it looks intimidating, but I think he's kind of like a friendly type. Um, and he actually just picks Guts up and he's like, you know, doesn't say anything, but he's like, you know, you're coming to the party. You're coming to celebrate because this is like a welcoming party for you and a you know a celebration of the the, the victory that we took today. Um, and Guts freaks out and he screams. He goes, "Don't touch me! Don't touch me!" And he punches Pippin in the face. And Pippin just doesn't think anything of it. I mean, Pippin's like just like, hmm, and just sort of keeps taking him down. But you know, this is how we're seeing the the um, what happened with Donovan affect him. Like this PTSD, this trauma of what happened. Um, he can't be touched. Um, and so anyway, Guts ends up having a few drinks and spending the nights during the celebration and he actually feels pretty good. Um, and then the next morning he's back on his wall, um, and Judah comes back up to him and asks how he feels about being a member of the band of the Hawk. Um, and Guts sort of goes, oh, you know, I'm just going to be seeing what happens essentially. Um, and he asks about Griffith. He goes, what kind of man is Griffith? And Judah says, none of us know what kind of man Griffith is. He's, um... You know, he can look really serious and then he hits you with this baby face smile. He can look really cruel and then he can look super, you know, um, admirable in, in a second. Um, and so that she sort of says that no one knows what kind of man Griffith is. Um, but uh, anyway, so we end up finding out that Griffith invites Guts to come over and wash up with him and just, you know, talk with him. It ends up turning into smucking around. They're throwing some buckets of water on each other and it's sort of building this sort of, um, well, what looks to be like... Uh, a friendship, actually. Um, they're both these really strong characters and it looks like they're going to actually be friends because they're sort of mucking around, they're tussling about, having a bit of a play wrestle sort of thing. Um, Griffith ends up showing Guts this necklace that he's wearing and Guts goes, whoa, what is that? That's kind of a wacky looking necklace. And Griffith takes it off and he shows it and he goes, it's a bear lit. And it's actually a bear lit, which we saw um, during the Guardians of Desire, which they had at um, the Count's Castle with Vargas, um, and so now we're, we're seeing chronologically the first appearance of the Behelit so far, um, and Guts sort of goes, oh, it almost looks like it's alive, and then the eye opens, and it's like, oh, um, and Griffith's just like, pretty neat, huh, like, it looks, it's pretty cool, right, and so he puts it back on, um, and he actually says, I wrote down this quote, Griffith said that this Behelit, it's said that whoever possesses this is destined to obtain the world in exchange for his own flesh and blood. Um... Guts further asks Griffin, uh, Griffith why he came to save him during the battle. Um, and Griffith says that he didn't, he's acquired this brand new, you know, incredible soldier and he just didn't want to lose him. Um, and he tells Guts that this is just the beginning for the band of the Hawk. And one day Griffith wants to own and rule his own kingdom. And Guts is like, how the hell can this man own an entire kingdom? Um, but he, he reminds Guts that he will be fighting for Griffith and for this kingdom because... Guts belongs to him now. So this was a brilliant arc. Um, so good. Like, you know, just a flashback of his childhood. Um, and it really gives us so much depth to his character. And I love that. Um, and the arc actually ends with just this huge um, swarm of, like, the Band of the Hawk people on their beautiful horses, knight in shining armor, all that, against this other massive army on this field. Um, and Guts sort of says something at the end, like, oh, you know, this is what I do now. Like, this is just my life. Um, so it sort of sounds like he's found his people, uh, but we'll see how we go because obviously what we found out in the um, in the Guardians of Desire arc kind of looks like Griffith turns evil. I don't know. Kind of seems like you know he turns into a a bad guy, or well, maybe not even a bad guy, but you know at the very least Griffith um, and Guts end up having some sort of altercation and they're no longer as close as they are anymore. So it's going to be really interesting and also kind of heartbreaking to see how that happens because all these things that Guts has gone through, it's making it seem like you know, as soon as he's found Griffith and the band of the Hawks, that, you know, these are some of the first people he's found that aren't going to abuse him, use him, um, mess with him, you know, they're actually trying to be friends with him, so it's going to be really heartbreaking to see how they separate, um, and whether or not they will come back together again, we won't, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but that's how the army end, uh, the arc ends, sorry, with, with the army, um, the army at the end of the arc, 
um, sort of facing each other on this battle. So we'll see what that battle is um, at, in the, at the start of the next arc, the next chapter. Um, and I'll be doing that, you know, sometime maybe in a couple of weeks or so. I've got a few videos planned, um, some other topics planned in between then. So we will see when I get to it. Um, but please let me know if you enjoyed this style. This is my second Berserk video. I really, really like making these ones. I love putting the pictures up um, in between the slots and making the transitions um, and sort of editing the audio over the picture. I find it really fun um, and writing down all the notes and, you know, really memorizing what happened um, in these arcs. And writing these notes has been a really good way for me to um, fully memorize what's happened and differentiate between each arc. So I've had uh, a lot of fun I got some really positive comments in the last one, people saying they just like someone talking about their favorite manga, so I'm having a blast with it, um, and I love talking to you guys about it. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on the Golden Age. Um, let me know, you know, how if, if you really want to see a third part, let me know if you want to see a third part, because, you know, I will do it, but if, you know, people really, really, really want to see it, then I'll obviously prioritize that. Um, so thank you for joining me on this. It's been an absolute thrill ride. And I'm really excited to get into the next arc. Um, like I said, I've got a few things to do in between then, but, you know, it probably won't be too much longer until then. So, as I always like to say, thank you so much for watching. Keep reading. Peace out.